Here's something that is worth immortalizing. It's a traditional neon sign company's display case, and it's got the carry handle on it. It's a plastic case made from perspex bonded together. And at one end is a black section with the power supply, right, the high voltage power supply. And then it has four sections of tubes. Now, each of these group of four tubes is actually one tube that is zigzag backwards and forwards. And the first section is based on neon, actual neon gas. So the two with phosphors are basically just going to act as a diffuser for the neon, but they add a little touch of color. Then we get the red glass with the neon and the clear glass with the neon. Then the other ones are based on actual ultraviolet output. So they've got argon and mercury in them, and they've got a phosphor coating, and the color of the tube is determined by the actual phosphor. Now, the reason there's a yellow tube here, that's uh, the noviol glass. The reason for that is because it uh, is very hard to get a decent yellow phosphor for some reason. So they just use white phosphor inside uh, yellow glass for that. So I'm going to turn this on now, and I'll have to change the exposure settings because otherwise it's going to swamp out big time. So I'll just pause while I do that. One moment, please. So I have really tamed it down now. Uh, something worth mentioning here is that this is neon and therefore it's that classic neon red. It's not showing up too well on camera because of the color temperature it's set for and it's not that easy to change that in the middle of filming. However, we have the classic neon red tubes, and this one is a sort of soft orange, followed by a sort of pinkish orange, and I would guess that may be a white phosphor in that, and it might be the pink phosphor here being used over the neon, and it just the neon causes a slight stimulation of the phosphor, but not much, so you end up with a very subtle colour change. Uh, then we've got the red glass with the neon, and then the clear glass with the neon gas in it. And you can see a slight pattern running in them. That's called jelly beaning. It may be something to do with the standing wave, not sure. It's something that happens with the electronic transformers. And there are dedicated electronic transformers that let you fine tune uh, to cause that jelly beaning effect deliberately. Then we've got a fairly strong traditional blue and a softer blue, more sort of, um, I would say it's a more what you might call a powder blue, this one. It is noticeably dimmer than that one. I'd probably choose that one. Then we've got purple, uh, pink, is that coming up okay? It is kind of the classic white, yellow, which is probably the white phosphor inside the yellow glass, and then uh, green and cyan. Cyan, or turquoise, is one of my favourite colours in neon. In fact, uh, my choice of colours for signage would be neon in red glass. It would be the argon mercury on its own in either clear or blue glass, cornflower blue they call that one, uh, and then it'd be purple, pink, and uh, cyan, because I think some those are some of the nicest neon colours. But this is what it looks like. It is uh, quite a smart unit. Um, I worked uh, with a sign company just helping them from time to time, and certainly I, the company that gave me this, I was buying a lot of custom neon tubes from them because I was actually installing it. And uh, the company I worked for, we made these cases. And uh, the process of making them, you get the perspex and you just put it together in a jig after you've cut it to size. And then you get a bottle with a fine needle point with, full of methylene chloride and you just run it along the seams. And when you do that, it just wicks in between the two layers and instantly melts the plastics together. It's amazing how fast it actually burns them. Um, but here we have it, uh, immortalised for all to see in the future. This is a neon sign company's display case.